All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Millennial Trade. So I want to do a quick Friday night video. What we're going to discuss in this video, obviously the biggest story of the week, which I think was the digital dollar pilot program that the Fed and a few different U.S. banks are starting very, very soon. I think actually this month. And I want to hit some of the FTX developments. This stuff gets weirder and weirder. We have yet another freed coming out of the woodwork that um, we should talk about. So I'm going to get into that and we'll go, uh, we'll get some uh, uh, just general market updates real quick. Some things I'm kind of looking at us existing home sales lowest since 2011. I think the fed wants it this way. You know, the uh, cost to borrow money is so high right now. We were talking about the retail sales in the US and we were talking about targets numbers remember targets numbers were down like 50% I think was their their profits I think were down 50% but this is because of all the stimulus that got pumped into the economy now it's contracting because there's no stimulus and uh, in fact they're doing quantitative tightening so uh, the, but the retail sales in the US I think those numbers came out pretty good well we had you K retail sales as well topping forecast. So what is this telling us? You know, are, are Americans still out there? Are, well, not just Americans, people throughout the world. Are they still like, you know, trying to <clears throat> afford a lifestyle uh, through credit or, you know, why, why are the retail numbers uh, better month over month in October? I, you know, maybe it was Halloween. I heard Halloween. There was actually a lot of in America that was like, it was like a record Halloween or something like that. Um, billions and billions of dollars spent on Halloween this year. You know, what's the Christmas season going to look like? These are all questions. These are these are things that we're all thinking about. We had uh, crude oil falling for the second session, and crude oil's down big on the week. This is generally good for the markets. We want to, you know, we we need to see the commodity prices continue to go down if the stocks are going to go up. Um, with gold, people are getting real excited about gold, especially since the dollar's contracting a little bit. And a lot of people are claiming gold's about to run. But again, I'll say it for like a third time now, until gold hits like 2,500 or 3,000, it's just like, what is there really to talk about? It's just kind of chopping around. So uh, that, that's my opinion on it. Um, the biggest news of the week, though, the thing I really just want to focus on here real quick, because I don't want to take all of your guys' evening up, um, the digital dollar pilot program. This is an important story. This is the most important story for me, because there's a lot of noise out there in the, you know, I mean, I could talk about James Bullard's comments on interest rates or what the, you know, the San Francisco Fed ghoul says about that. I mean, w there's so much you could talk about. You could talk about earnings. There's a lot of noise out there. What's not noise is that the central bank and some in cooperation with some of these other banks, they are uh, beginning a digital dollar pilot program, right? This is coming from uh, uh, decrypt.com, but it says U.S. banks launch a digital dollar blockchain pilot and the mainstream uh, uh, banking institutions are HBSC, MasterCard, and Wells Fargo. And eventually... They plan on bringing, you know, a, a PNC Bank, Citibank, Truist Financial, TD Bank, and U.S. Bank. They they want to bring all of them into the pilot program. All right. Uh, they say it's, um, you know, what this di what these digital digital dollars are from from what they're saying is that it's uh, a ledger technology, a blockchain technology that will create. Um, opportunities to improve financial settlements. Well, essentially what that means to me is the Federal Reserve can create more dollars, which will be inflationary, by the way, to give to the banks as reserves or to hold for the banks as reserves so that the banks can lend out even more money that they don't have. It's a pretty ingenious scam, really, when you think about it. And to me, it's kind of funny, after the collapse of crypto because of FTX, now the central bank is announcing this. I mean, sure, this has been in the works, you know, uh, uh, for a while now, but now they come out with the announcement. Uh, it probably won't be too long before the ECB does something as well, similar to this, you know, some kind of pilot program for digital currencies. The reason this is so important though, all right, and a lot of people are afraid of it. I'm not really afraid of it. There's going to be other markets. There will be other currencies. Um, 
you know, it kind of makes sense if we live in a globalized world to have one central, uh, uh, or, you know, maybe not a centralized currency, but a unifying currency of some sort. Uh, you know, maybe that's God's will. Maybe it's not God's. Maybe it's not God's will. Time will only tell. But the important thing is that what the, the reason the Fed wants to do this so bad is because I think one of the main reasons is, is because they can control the money velocity. They can control how fast the money makes it through the system. If you remember the stock market surge after the crash of 2020, I mean, that w- with all the stimulus checks, that was just money velocity was at a peak. And I think the Fed is, you know, they've said they don't know much about inflation. They don't really know how it works. They're still kind of studying it, you know, and it's been like a hundred years since the inflation debate was won, yet they're still studying inflation uh, and, and how it works, how to get it down, how to bring it up. They want to control it, right? And one way you can um, <clears throat> control money velocity is by issuing the central bank credits, currencies, dollars, whatever you want to call it. So what do I mean about by how they can control the money velocity? Well, imagine if they just sent everybody a thousand dollar stimulus credit might be on the phone, might be on a card, might be in a chip in your hand or something. They can send everybody, all Americans, right? A thousand dollars worth of these stimulus credits and there could be a time limit on these credits. So let's say you get $1,000 dropped into your bank account or on your Fed card or whatever, you know, your chip, maybe it's in your temple or in between your eyes, you get these credits, all right? But then the Fed says, but there's a time limit. You have one month to spend these credits or three months to spend these credits, right? So this is how they can control the money velocity. They can push money out there, tell people that you've got to use it or you're not going to be able to use it. And they could actually do this where they control what you buy as well. Like they could say, oh, here's a thousand dollar stimulus credit. Got to be used in three months, but it can only be used on consumable goods or food or something like that. So any industry, any sector that's showing weakness or that they want to pump up or that they want to bring down, um, they'll be able to kind of pull some strings here if they had this digital currency, you know, blockchain ledger that happens to be centralized. You know, and the whole argument by the crypto bulls is that, oh, this is a centralized currency. The central bank has all the control, yada, yada, yada. Well, it looks like the decentralized crypto blockchain currencies uh, are not that stable. You know, I mean, at least maybe something that the Fed is producing will there be a little bit more uh, uh, stability there. Right. That That's the argument, I guess, from from the Fed side and proponents of this idea. But yeah, they can control the money velocity by controlling the time and they can control like what sector the money is going into by controlling what you buy. Let's say government assistance too. a lot of, you know, people that get, um, let's say EBT, right? Maybe it's five, six hundred dollars a month. Well, if this was done on a central bank, you know, blockchain ledger that they control, they could then control what you can buy with the EBT, right? Because there probably is a lot of government uh, assistance that's wasted on, you know, probably crap food, stuff that's not very healthy. Um, nor is it economically feasible to be eating like that when you're on government assistance. So the federal reserve, you know, could say, Oh, well, you can only buy, you know, certain canned items or, or fresh produce, or you can only get water. You can't buy sodas. You know, I'm not saying they're going to do this, but these are the implications of having the federal reserve, beginning their digital dollar pilot program. That's what I'm calling it. So um, definitely the most important story of the week. Uh, Without being too much more long-winded here, let's go ahead and talk about the FTX developments because this stuff gets really weird, guys. There's two major developments that I want you to be aware of. Number one, there appears to be another guy behind the whole, behind Sam Bankman, right? Sam Bankman is the front. He's the face that we get to see. He's like the Rothschilds, right? We get to see the Rothschilds. We don't get to see who's funding the Rothschilds. Well, Sam Bankman freed. He may just be the front guy. And there's another uh, scam artist. And you can't make this up, guys. <laughs> Here's his name. Dan Friedman, all right? And it gets even worse. 
This guy, Friedman, was involved in a poker scandal about 15 years ago with Ultimate Bets. They basically built some software where they could look at other people's hands and they were cheating. And, you know, it was a huge scandal back then. Uh, this guy, Dan, no, not Friedman. I'm sorry. It's Friedberg. Sorry. His name is Dan Friedberg. I, I swear you cannot make this stuff up. You just can't. These names, these people, these, uh Okay, so he's involved in this poker scandal 15 years ago. 15 years later, he pops up in the FTX scandal. But here's the thing. He um, has pretty much scrubbed the internet of any of his existence. He used to have like a, 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 a LinkedIn page or LinkedIn, whatever it's called. That's been taken down. You really cannot find any information about this guy whatsoever. And he was, um, I mean, according to one source here, uh, he was like a, a, a chief, um, a chief, he was like the lawyer and one of the, uh, uh, the regulatory officers at, at FTX, right? A, a, a known scam artist. Nobody nowadays really knew who he was, but 15 years ago, you know, this guy, um, could have gone to jail if he was caught for what he did with ultimate bets. Are any of these people going to go to jail? I highly doubt it. They're donating to Democrat campaigns. You know, do any of these Democrat donors or people ever really go to jail? I mean, supposedly Epstein did, but uh, we won't get into that. Um, the second development with FTX, and, and this is even darker, and I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I, I want to, I want you to be aware of the esoteric and be aware of the symbolism that we're being faced with here. If you look at the Alamada Research Firm's logo, which is FTX, it's Sam Bankman frieds um, trading firm, okay, Alamada Research. Look at the logo and then look at the logo to um, an association called NAMBLA. Or I think it might be called, uh, um, might be called like Man Boy Love Association. If you guys remember back when we were doing the exposés on you now, some of you won't remember this, but there were some creepy characters on that website and um, the CEO of that website made a documentary in college where he basically was humanizing the monsters of Nambla. And that's how we got into these, you know, we, we uh, learned about these symbols. Um, there was actually a situation where on a Twitter banner, on Gavin Newsom's Twitter banner, the symbol was there. I, I won't get into that. That video is on Bitch You. You can still watch that video to this very day. Um, but but it was there. The, that creepy symbol was on Gavin Newsom's Twitter banner. You cannot make this up. And then when I made the video about it, it came down. Well, not just me. Several people made videos about it and it came down. But that being said, look at the Alamada Research um, logo and tell me it's not eerily similar to the Nambla logos. What the FBI says is the, you know, man, boy, love association uh, uh, symbols, right? This is how they identify themselves. And then you look at some of the t-shirts he was wearing. There's like a heart as well that's eerily similar to another organization, you know? So when you go down these rabbit holes and you realize they were you know, using drugs and they were all sleeping together. They were in a polyamorous relationship. They probably had polyamorous identities. I mean, they were dressing up like furries and wood nymphs and lounging around on beanbag chairs, playing League of Legends when they were supposed to be trading customer deposits. Uh, you just can't make this stuff up. But when you, when you get into this, you know, they're living in the Bahamas. Uh, who else do we know loves private islands, right? All these weirdos from Florida and the Clintons and, you know, uh, the, the people hanging out on the Lolita Express. That's why, like, when we look at Florida now, right, everybody's taking, a, a, I guess, a lot of interest in Florida because of Ron DeSantis and, you know, the red wave down there and their stance against uh, the, the tyranny of the COVID era. But again, Florida's not without its issues. There are a lot of weird people down there and there's a lot of weird stuff going on in Florida. Has been for many, many decades. I mean, isn't that where Epstein committed like vast numbers of his crimes was in Florida and, and they covered it up? You know, uh, I could go on and on and on. But you know, Florida, there's some, you know, you got Disney World or Disneyland in Florida. We know about those stories. So keep all this in mind that with FTX, all these people losing their money, it might be worse than that. You know, there might be crimes and, and rings and uh, 
and organizations and, and schemes here that would um, that would you know really really shock any of us. I mean, it's already shocking, but um, and again, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I want you to be aware of Dan Friedberg, okay, out of all the possible fucking names that could have possibly come up after this, and it's uh, uh, Dan Friedberg. And then also the, um, you know, the symbolism, the, the symbols that seem to be associated with even darker organizations that FTX was using. And, and then you find out all these social media personalities were pushing this. You have me, Kevin, saying he likes Sam Bankman Freed and he trusts him. You have Kevin O'Leary uh, pushing. I swear, I think Kevin O'Leary is pumping and dumping altcoins or, or shit coins. You know, I, I think that's what he's doing. He has to be, right? Does Kevin O'Leary really believe in this? Like... This is a guy who used to say, I don't buy anything that doesn't pay a dividend. It's not an investment. It's a speculation. Well, he's doing a lot of speculating or he's doing a lot of pumping and dumping these shit coins that people like to talk about. So let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Are you creeped out by these most recent developments with FDX? I would love to hear back from you. And what do you guys think about the digital dollar pilot program? Are you nervous about it? Or are you going to embrace it? And make sure to follow me on Instagram at Millennial Trades. And as always, until next time, I'll see you on the next video.